was able to wear a tight-waisted frock of green damask, embroidered with silver trimmings. It had cost more than she could bear to think, but which she still constantly thought about. In it she looked as slight as Elizabeth, though not as virginal, but then she never had. The two neighbours and cousins by marriage bowed slightly to each other, but did not speak. Then the war leggans passed on to the bride and groom to shake their hands and wish them a happiness which George at least begrudged. Ennis had always been a protégé and a creature of Ross Poldark, and while still a struggling and impecunious mind surgeon, had turned away from the rich patronage of the Warleggans and made it plain where his loyalties lay. George observed today how sick Dwight was still looking. He stood beside his tall, radiant, red-haired wife, who topped him by an inch, and who looked the picture of youth and sophisticated happiness, but himself thin and drawn and grey at the temples, and seemingly devoid of muscle and flesh within his clothes. They moved on again, and spoke for a while with the Reverend Osborne and Mrs. Whitworth. Ozzy, as usual, was dressed in the extremity of fashion, and his bride of last July had got a new outfit of a snuff brown, which did not suit her, because it made her dark skin look darker. For the most part, she kept her eyes down and did not speak. But when addressed, she looked up and smiled and answered politely, and it was not really at all possible from her expression to perceive the misery and revulsion that was burning in her heart, nor the nausea caused by the cellular stirrings of an embryonic Aussie in her womb. Presently, George moved away from them and drew Elizabeth towards a corner where Sir Francis and Lady Bassett were talking. So the pleasant conversation of the wedding reception went on. Two hundred people, the cream of the society of Mid-Cornwall, squires, merchants, bankers, soldiers, fox hunters, the titled and the landed, the untitled and the moneyed, the seekers and the sought. In the Malay, Demelza became separated from Ross, and seeing Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Allen Daniel went to speak to them. They greeted her like an old friend which, considering they had only met her once, was gratifying, and, considering that on that occasion Ross had refused to oblige Mr. Daniel by accepting a magistracy, even more pleasing. Standing near them was a sturdy, quietly dressed, reserved man in his late thirties, and presently Mr. Daniel said, My lord, may I present to you Mrs. Demelza Poldark? Captain Ross Poldark's wife, the Viscount Falmouth. They bowed to each other. Lord Falmouth said, Your husband has been very much in the news, ma'am. I have yet to have the pleasure of congratulating him on his exploit. I am only hoping, sir, Demelza said, that all the congratulations will not go to his head and induce him to embark on another. Falmouth smiled, a very contained smile carefully poured out, like a half measure of some valuable liquid and not to be wasted. It is a change to find a wife so concerned to keep her husband at home. But we may yet have need of him, and others like him. Then, Demelza said, I believe neither of us will be lacking. They looked at each other very straightly. Lord Falmouth said, You must come and visit us sometime and passed on. The Poldarks were staying the night with Harris Pascoe, the banker, and over a late supper in his house in Pydar Street, Demelza said, I'm not sure that I've done good for you with Lord Falmouth, Ross, and told of the interchange. It's of no moment whether you pleased or displeased him, Ross said. We do not need his patronage. Oh, but that is his way, said Pascoe. You should have known his uncle, the second Viscount. He had no appearance, but was arrogant withal. This one is more easy to treat with. He and I fought in the same war, said Ross, but did not meet. He being in the king's own, and a rank superior to me. I confess I do not take greatly to his manner, but I'm glad if you made a good impression on him. I do not at all think I made a good impression, said Demelza. Pasco said, I suppose you know that Hugh Armitage is a cousin of the Falmouths? His mother.